This podcast is a production of the Salem Podcast Network. For more podcasts like this from courageous voices of conservative reason, visit salempodcastnetwork.com. If you like America first, then check out our separate podcast, The Battle for 1600, with my former White House colleague, Boris Epstein. Every week, we give you the inside, in-depth analysis of what's really going on. The Battle for 1600. Subscribe today. fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal i know not what course others may take but as for me give me liberty or give me death the world will little note or long remember what we say here but it can never forget what they did here I have a dream to do. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. And the people... And the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. And we will make... America great again. This is America First with Sebastian Gorka. This is America First with Sebastian Gorka, and I'm very proud to introduce our guest host for today, Jennifer Horn. Aw, thank you, uh, Dr. G. Welcome to America First. I'm Jennifer Horn on loan from AM 870 and AM 590, The Answer, Salem Radio in Los Angeles. I host The Morning Answer with a voice maybe familiar to some of you America First fans, Grant Stinchfield and I. We run the mornings in Los Angeles. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Gosh, Dr. G is uh, on vacation I think uh, Kurt Schlichter, Colonel K, was in yesterday, so it's a pleasure to to hang out with you today. Let me be the first to wish you a happy Independence Day. We are already, if you can believe it, at the 4th of July holiday. Now, for me, I don't know about you guys, but I used to feel like that was the middle of summer. I feel like we're just getting started. So hopefully you will have a safe weekend. Maybe you are hitting the road and traveling. We appreciate you uh, sticking with us. We have got... A really big jam-packed show today, and we will talk a little bit about Independence Day. But first, I have to ask you, did you see it? Are any of you listening right now to my voice on Facebook? Because if you are, we have got to connect today. 833-33-GORKA is the number to call, 833 833- Three three Gorka. You can watch our video feed, get additional content, keep in touch with Seb at sebgorka.com. But if you have been on Facebook in the last 24 hours, you may have gotten a notification. I was stunned when I went on to Facebook. And I want to read this to you because I want to get this right. When you go on to Facebook, if you happen to be a conservative, I'm going to guess that you've already gotten this message or you will get this message. Facebook. I'll show it to you right now for those of you in the video chat. Jennifer, you may have been exposed to harmful extremist content recently. Violent groups trying to manipulate your anger and disappointment. If they only knew, it's like they know me. You can take action now to protect yourself and others. This is a story that has blown up today. Another attempt by the left, by progressives, by big tech, by social media to silence conservatives. Facebook is now issuing extremism warnings to its users via pop-up modifications. Yesterday, multiple Facebook users reported receiving this notification. I got it this morning. First thing I was prepping for this show, looked on social media. There it is on Facebook, warning me with my name on it. They're warning about being exposed to extremist content. Now, 
our friends over at Red State, redstate.com is uh, under the Salem Media umbrella. And uh, they were really the first to start reporting on this story. Kira Davis is a great reporter over there. And she said on Twitter yesterday, hey, has anyone had this message pop up on their Facebook? My friend, who is not an ideologue but hosts lots of competing chatter, got this message twice, and he's very disturbed. And it asks, are you concerned that someone you know is becoming an extremist? We care about preventing extremism on Facebook. Others in your situation have received confidential support. So think about this for a second. Not only are they addressing you, telling you that you may have come into contact with, and I'm using air quotes here, an extremist, but they also say that others, meaning people in your social circle, have already become so concerned and overwhelmed about this extremist chatter on Facebook that they've reached out and received help confidential support because they just simply couldn't carry on. Now, once this message pops up in the Facebook platform, it asks if you want to hear stories and get advice from people who escaped violent extremist groups. And you can click whether you want to get support or if you want to close the message. Now, I think I made the mistake of just hitting close because I thought it was ridiculous. But if you had hit get support, The link leads you directly to a group called Life After Hate that's supposed to help lead people out of, quote, violent far-right extremism. Now, I don't know about you guys. I don't deny that there are people on the far right who have probably said violent things. But it's pretty darn insulting to me as a conservative to think that it is simply the far right that is being targeted. What about the far left? What about Black Lives Matter? What about people who are saying we need to burn down our country and start from scratch again? What about the people who used and are still using Facebook and social media platforms to figure out how to organize riots, to take apart federal buildings in cities like Portland, to light police cars on fire? What about those guys? They're not mentioned in Facebook, only far-right extremists. We're talking about this before we went on the air And uh, producer Jeff says, hey, you think Ilan Omar got one of these notifications? Or is it just people that they consider to be on the right or the far right? So if you ask for support, they tell you about this organization, Life After Hate. And they say it's committed to helping people leave the violent far right to connect with humanity and lead compassionate lives. Think about what that's saying. Now, I'm a conservative. I would consider myself to be on the right. Maybe some people would say the far right. I don't know if I feel like that, but maybe some people might say that about me. But I'd also consider myself to be pretty compassionate. And I think it's pretty insulting to think that somehow if you're conservative, you are incapable of compassion. They say our vision is a world that allows people to change and contribute to society without violence. Now they talk about their programs. They say their primary goal is to interrupt violence committed in the name of ideological or religious beliefs. They say they do this through education, interventions, academics, research, and outreach. And they talk about this whole program. You can watch videos. You can connect with people. You can get help to try to overcome your political views. Now, Think about this. We're getting ready to celebrate the 4th of July. We're getting ready to celebrate independence and our great country. And a platform that at least originally was supposed to stand for free speech is doing their very best to silence conservatives, to silence people that have different political opinions than theirs. It's not enough anymore to tag your posts or to pull your post down, or to say that you're making up stories about the 2020 election, or you're making up stories about COVID-19. That's not enough anymore. Big tech, social media, Mark Zuckerberg, the left, all working in tandem to silence conservative voters and tell you that you need a support group, that you need mental help. (laughs) Look, Maybe that's true. Maybe we all need a little mental help, but maybe not for reasons that we post on Facebook. I have to tell you, as much as I I love my platform, I use Twitter for my political posts at Jennifer Horn. You can follow Seb Gorka at Seb Gorka. 
mostly on Facebook. If you follow me on Facebook, you're going to get pictures of vacations. You might get a few interesting little cartoons here and there, maybe a few news stories. But you're not getting any kind of crazy ideology that would somehow incite violence. Yet, apparently, Facebook thinks that anybody who they think through their algorithms somehow going to be capable of violence and they have to step in and help all of us. Have you gotten this message? Can you believe that Facebook on Independence Day weekend sending out messages now to conservatives? 833-33-GORKA. We will talk about that. It is pretty insane. I have tweeted it out. You can follow it at Jennifer Horn. If you haven't seen the message yet, it's on Facebook, Jennifer Horn Radio on Facebook or Instagram. Have you gotten this message? And is this the last straw, an overt attempt to silence conservatives and try to paint us as people who are unstable or who need help. It's pretty insane. 833-33-GORKA. We will take your calls. And as we return, a new lawsuit at the border. President Trump was just there this week. And now we're finding out that uh, Border Patrol agents and sheriffs are getting ready to sue the Biden administration. Sheriff Lamb joins us as we continue. Jennifer Horn in for Seb Gorka. This is America First. Relief Factor. Have you tried every other form of pain relief only to fail and not find your answer? Well, try this incredible product that is providing liberation from pain to tens of thousands of Americans across the country, including Alicia from California. I'm a grocery store worker and have been working doubles during this coronavirus shutdown. At 52 years old, my two bad knees are not getting a rest. I literally limp to and from bed. Two days into Relief Factor and the pain has decreased substantially. So thankful for this amazing product. That could be you. It should be you. Find out today the only way you can by ordering the three-week quick starter pack at relieffactor.com. Call them at 800-500-8384. It'll be at your door in three days or less. Take it morning and evening just like I do. And I promise you, by the end of those three weeks, you will know whether it works for you like it works for me, Alicia, and thousands of your fellow Americans. What have you got to lose except the pain? Do it today. 800-500-8384. ReliefFactor.com. ReliefFactor.com. I'm Sebastian Gorka on America First. Let's get back to the show with Jennifer Horn. Thank you, Dr. G. That is Sebastian Gorka. He's out today. I'm Jennifer Horn. In for him. This is America First broadcasting from our mobile relieffactor.com studios today in Los Angeles. I'm based in California. I host the Morning Answer on AM 870, AM 590, The Answer in LA. And we were talking, we're going to talk to Sheriff Lamb here in a few moments. There's a new lawsuit um, from sheriffs and ICE agents that are actually suing the Biden administration, if you can believe this, simply just to do their jobs. But before we get there, I had turned on in preparation for this show, in preparation for my morning show, I always cruise social media in the morning, and I'll look and see what's trending on Twitter. I'll see what people are posting about on Facebook just to see what the conversation is. And it seems that Facebook, in all of their infinite wisdom, has decided that they are going to put a warning. And they call you by name. Mine says, Jennifer, are you concerned? Someone you know is becoming an extremist. You've been you've You've been exposed to extremist messaging on Facebook. So it warns you. Then it asks you if you need help. It says, get support. And then it goes through and uh, takes you through this, <laughs> this whole fact sheet, essentially, from this group, Life After Hate, that's committed to rehabilitate helping people leave the violent far right to connect with humanity. Now, this is clearly just another attempt, right, to, to silence conservatives. Remember, the government is now telling you 
that the biggest threat to our country, it's not China, it's not Russia, it's not COVID-19, none of that. It's not, it's not ISIS, it's not Al-Qaeda, it's not the Taliban. No, the biggest threat to our country right now, according to the government, the Biden administration and the far left, is white supremacists and a far-right extremism. So, of course, Facebook is getting ready to go in and try to censor you, bully you into getting help. And it, they even cite this, saying far-right extremism and white supremacy are the greatest domestic terror threats facing the United States. They uh, go on to say, since the deadly Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville in August 2017, this organization that Facebook is trying to get people to to go and get help from has helped 500 people and families. Now, this is just the latest attempt. Look, also this week, Nancy Pelosi was out. She has created this select committee that is filled with people who are supposed to now be able to investigate the January 6th commission. Now, what happened on January 6th, I think most of us in talk radio, most of us that you listen to have been pretty consistent. People who entered the Capitol and who did it unlawfully should be punished. But what should not happen is what is happening. And that is that people that simply went to the rally to watch former President Trump or who were at the Capitol are having their lives tossed by the FBI. I, I know people, I've had listeners in Los Angeles who say that the FBI went through their house They weren't even near the Capitol. They were just at the Trump rally, and they recovered evidence from their homes. That evidence was a Trump-Pence 2020 sticker. They're taking that from their homes. The FBI, the men and women of the FBI, doing good work, are being called to do this to good law-abiding citizens. So instead of just punishing the troublemakers, we're looking at everybody now, right? They're trying to say that, that everybody who was at that rally, everybody who was a Trump supporter, is somehow known as an extremist. So enter Nancy Pelosi, who knows that she's in trouble in 2022. She knows she is probably going to lose her speaker's gavel because it just takes a a few, few seats to change hands to the Republican side to get her out of power. And she's saying, what can I do to hold on to that? Well, I can demonize Republicans. I can try to silence you. Remember, the old Republican Party before President Trump used to be shamed into everything. The Mitt Romneys and the John McCains, you would call them a racist or a sexist or any of the ists, and they would back off. And that's how the left was able to push their agenda without even letting you know what they were doing. And when President Trump came along, God love him, he was born without a shame bone. I don't think many of us could withstand what President Trump did. He wasn't bullied out of his positions. In fact, he fought harder when people called him names or labeled him as something. And so now Democrats are reverting back to that same strategy to target all of you, to target me, to target all of us by saying, if you somehow say that you are a Republican or if you speak your truth about your political ideology, you're going to be called names. You're going to be branded. You're going to be pushed into a help group on Facebook. Nancy Pelosi put together this committee today to investigate, or not today, but this week, to investigate January 6th. And she named, all you have to do just to look at the political nature of this, if you're really interested in the truth, there are already investigations going on as to what happened, who helped organize the January 6th riot, and where the failings were with the Capitol Police. All of that is already in progress, but the Democrats and Nancy Pelosi need more because they think it will help them weaponize this information to use in the 2022 election. This is who is on that committee named this week. Representative Benny Thompson, Representative Zoe Lofgren, Representative Adam Schiff, my congressman, who has not seen a camera that he hasn't lied to in the last five years. Representative Pete Aguilar, also from California, Stephanie Murphy, Jamie Raskin, Elaine Luria. Oh, more than half of those people were impeachment case managers going against President Trump. And to make this a bipartisan committee, Nancy Pelosi chooses Liz Cheney, a Republican, to go on this committee to investigate and get to the bottom of things. It is incredible. 833-33-GORKA. Stephen is in Madison, Wisconsin on uh, line four. Stephen, hi. You're on America First. Jennifer Horn in for Seb Gorka. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. How are you doing? So uh, I was on LinkedIn yesterday, and this uh, cop had a picture up, and he said, my life matters, and so I got a lot of chatter. 
And so I started commenting back and forth with, and this guy said that he was talking about how, you know, 451 cops or black people were killed by white cops last year. And so I started contradicting them and then uh, got back and forth. And finally, I just said, you're a racist mor- uh, moron and uh, LinkedIn shut me down. I'm off LinkedIn now. <laughs> wow, for <laughs> I'm hate a bully. speech. You know what? You've yeah. done something pretty incredible, uh, uh, Stephen. Usually all of this stuff happens on Instagram or Facebook or, or Twitter, but you actually managed to get kicked off of LinkedIn. It, it's sad that even there in a platform that's supposed well, to be I've used. i off of the other two as well. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you, you, you so you've got to right go thing and defend thing, people and, uh, you know, give them the right information. And you're going to end up getting kicked off because it doesn't meet the uh, liberal mantra. So that's I would problem. challenge you here. Once you, if you do get back on, continue posting. You know, one of the things we talk about here on this program, I know Seb talks about it all the time. Don't stop. You have to keep messaging. Even it, you just have to find creative ways to do it. Post articles, say what you think. Just don't, don't resort to the name calling that can get you thrown off of these online platforms. Steven, thank you so much for the phone call. 833-33-GORKA. Left trying to silence here. We're going to check in and get an update from the border and my home state of California. Our governor, Gavin Newsom, he is headed for a recall. We finally have a date. And I'm going to tell you as we continue what that race will mean for the rest of the country, because there are major implications and messages to be sent that could be good for all conservatives across the country. Jennifer Horn in for Seb Gorka. This is America First. America first. Can you believe it? They are saying that they don't agree with America first. How do you say that? Magnificent. I don't know how you say that, Mr. President. Former President Trump out and about this week. He was at the border looking like a thousand times more presidential than our current president, Joe Biden. And we will have uh, some more on President Trump here in just a few moments. I'm Jennifer Horn in for Sebastian Gorka. You have found us. This is America First. Happy Independence Day weekend to all of you. Don't forget to check out SebGorka.com. That's where you can get exclusive content. You can follow the video of this show and, uh, and keep up with Seb and the whole crew here at America First. Now, For those of you who listen to the program on Wednesdays, typically I'm here in the 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern slot and to talk to to Seb about California and all of its craziness. And one of the biggest stories of the year for us in our in my home state of California is the recall of our governor, Gavin Newsom. Now, Gavin Newsom, if you look up in a dictionary or if you look up in an encyclopedia, you try to look what a politician looks like. Gavin Newsom is that guy. He's got the hair, he's coiffed. But as governor in California, he has not done a whole lot. In fact, his career as mayor of San Francisco, as lieutenant governor in the state of California, he has very few accomplishments, but he has a name. He is the nephew of Nancy Pelosi by marriage, not by blood. And He has a name in California. He has uh, almost just anything he's run for, he's been able to win. He has that power behind him in our state. And as governor, he led the most restrictive shutdown for the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. We were shut down for about 15 months here in the state of California. Businesses were put out. The net migration out of the state in California is now negative instead of positive. It's never been like that. Historically, people, more people want to come to California than are leaving. But now everybody is leaving the state and it's high taxes, it's crazy laws, a defund the police movement. So people's safety is at risk. Our schools are failing. There's a lot going wrong. And one of the most encouraging things that has happened in a long time in our state is that a group of citizens got together and they formed a group to recall Gavin Newsom. They got together. They notified him back in January of 2020 that he would be recalled. They started gathering signatures, and they gathered 1.7 million verified signatures to put the recall on the ballot. Well, now 
if you can imagine. We actually have a date. After all of this talking about Gavin Newsom, it seems that that September 14th will be the day that voters in California will go out and decide. Well, they'll have two questions to uh, to consider on the ballot. The first question will be, do you want to recall Gavin Newsom, yes or no? And if more than 50 percent say yes, Gavin Newsom will no longer be the governor in the state of California. If the answer is yes, then you move on to question two. And question two will say, who shall replace Gavin Newsom? And there are going to be a list. It will probably be about 100 names. There are already a lot of people, some that you've heard of, some that you haven't, who have jumped into this race. Probably to this point, the most prominent name is Caitlyn Jenner. She is running as a Republican. John Cox, who ran against Gavin Newsom in 2018, is also a part of the race. Kevin Faulkner, the former mayor of San Diego, Doug Osi, a former congressman, uh, Major Williams, a few others that have uh, come to prominence. And whoever gets the most votes, it could be 20% of the vote, it could be 25% of the vote, it could be 18% of the vote, depending on how they split it up. If that answer to question number one is yes, whoever gets the most votes in question number two will replace Gavin Newsom. Now, this is huge. This This messaging alone that we were able to in the most liberal of states in the country and the most liberal of governors stage a recall successfully in California sends a huge message to progressives across the nation. But more than that, what Californians have the opportunity to do is oust this governor. And that will only help conservatives across the country to set up that narrative that it is unacceptable, even in far left, very, very, very blue California, to have the types of policies, the taxes, the hardships that have been passed on by the government, that the people will fight back. Now, there are a lot of candidates who are lining up. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the Democrats are going to fight hard to keep Gavin Newsom in this position. It is a battle of the messaging. They don't want him to lose his position. They don't want to have to explain how their policies are not working in California. But the race is starting to shake out a bit now that we have a date. And as we continue, we will talk about some of the candidates who may be jumping in. Some of them may sound pretty familiar to you. In fact, it's been rumored and reported that one of our colleagues here on Salem Radio, the sage, Larry Elder, he may be jumping into this race. I had the opportunity to talk to him earlier today about whether or not he will jump in. We will hear what he has to say about the prospects of Larry Elder running for California governor as we continue on America First. America First. Magnificent. Now is the time to save yourself some big money each month, and it really isn't difficult to make it happen. Just refinance your mortgage and do it now before rates get any higher. I mean it. This is the best time. The rates we're seeing really can make a significant difference on your budget, making now the time to call American Financing, America's home for home loans. Take advantage of a free mortgage review and see if you can save up to $1,000 a month. Can you believe it? There is no obligation, no upfront or hidden fees, just a simple conversation around ways you can save. So what are you waiting for? Pre-qualify for free by calling 855 855- 581-5828. That's 855-581-5828 or visit AmericanFinancing.net. American Financing, NMLS, 182334, NMLSConsumerAccess.org. All right, welcome back to America First. Jennifer Horn in for Dr. Sebastian Gork. It's such a pleasure to be hanging out with you on what feels sort of like a holiday Friday. A lot of people headed out of town to the airports, maybe you're hitting the road, maybe you've noticed those gas prices, a little higher than usual. I paid $4.39 in California. That is where I'm located. I host The Morning Answer on AM 870, AM 590, The Answer with Grant Stinchfield. And uh, we were talking 
about the recall election of Gavin Newsom in California. We finally have a date. It was named Thursday afternoon. September 14th is the date that voters will decide whether or not to recall Governor Gavin Newsom. And this has some pretty big implications in terms of messaging for Democrats and Republicans across the country. Now, one of the ways things will get mixed up a little bit. Now, remember, Gavin Newsom is really running against himself. Question number one is, do you want to recall Gavin Newsom? Yes or no. So he has to answer for a lot of his mistakes and uh, missteps that he's made over the last year. But it does depend for the voters about how much trust they have in the candidates running to replace Gavin Newsom. Now, there are several Republicans who are running. And uh, if you've been paying attention to uh, political publications like Politico, the AP, even the Los Angeles Times have reported that it is possible that our colleague here on Salem Radio, uh, we call him the sage of South Central, Larry Elder, may choose to run for governor. I was able to interview him this morning on my morning show, The Morning Answer, and he talked a little bit about what he is considering. Take a listen here. Cut number one, uh, Larry Elder saying he is strongly considering a run for governor. The L.A. Times. The Associated Press. The Associated Press. Politico. Jen and Grant. Jen and Grant. Is it, is it true that maybe, Sage, your arm has been twisted? Maybe you're considering well, I, I was shaking things morning. up? I was watching a Fox Morning show just now, and they said, well, it's official. The California recall election is going to take place on September the 14th. And uh, Trace Gallagher said, yeah, but doesn't appear to be any Republican entering the race that's really gotten anybody's uh, attention. They've got Dan O.C., they got Faulkner, they got Caitlyn Jenner, uh, they've got uh, Don Cox, lost by 20 points. But it doesn't seem to be anybody entering the race that's really caught fire. I'm like, oh, hello, hello, <laughs> hello, Trace, you're killing us over here. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, I mean, gotta, do, I, do I have to play the race card? What do I have to do? <laughs> to get some attention. So does that mean does does that mean you have entered the race? Grant, Grant, oh. would you infer from what I just said that that might take the take the case? Um, don't believe everything you read in Politico, although they're not always wrong. Now, uh, <laughs> I, I am strongly considering it. I will tell you that, and I will have some news probably within the next few days. But I am strongly considering. 833 Gorka, the impact of the California recall on uh, the rest of the country. The sage Larry Elder, our colleague here at Salem Radio, saying he strongly considers running for governor, that he'd make an announcement in either way in the next couple of days. And I asked him about the catalyst because I've known Larry for a long time. Full disclosure, we are pretty close friends. And in talking with him, I know that he cares about issues. And he has consistently cared about California for as long as I've known him. But he also is a talk radio star. He is a person who, he's a filmmaker. He's done a lot of other pet projects. And so I asked him what that catalyst was to even put him in the direction of saying, no, I'm not definitely not going to run for governor. And well, I may consider it. This is what he had to say. Truly, I mean, I've had people like accost me at speaking events. You got to get Larry Elder. He's got to run for governor. We've talked about it here on the program. And look, it's not that uh, you care about these issues very deeply, but you have a lot of things that you need to consider when you make this decision. What is that moment that went from you saying no to us a couple weeks ago to now saying, you know what, I'm thinking about it? Was there one issue or one thing that was the catalyst right. for that change? Well, well, Jen and Grant, there wasn't a, a, a particular moment, but at some point, at some point, the evolution of my thinking became one of, if not me, who, if not now, when? Honestly, that's what it happened. Uh, people kept telling me that I'm the one, like you said, who's got the name recognition, the personality, the energy, the understanding of the issues. I'm a native Californian. And then when are the stars going to line up like this? again. When? Will there be a recall election where maybe you might be able to win with 20, 25 percent of the vote? Uh, given the fact that California, the, the Democrats outnumber registered Republicans by three to one. Even up, it'd be very difficult to win. But in a race like this, uh, assuming he does get recalled, and then the next question, of course, is who do you want to replace him? The person that, that replaces him could win with 20, 25 percent of the vote. Absolutely. That's not likely going to happen again. Well, there you go. Uh, is he in? We will find out. That is a name that could shake up the race. Eight three 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 Gorka Brent in Los Angeles on line one. Thanks for joining us on America First, Brent. Hi. Hello, a holy and sacred Fourth of July, Jen of Arc. That is me. Yes, you've <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> What's on your mind, Brent? Well, I'm calling to implore you to help save California's 40 million Americans today on your marvelous morning answer. Larry Elder said he's seriously considering a run for governor. 
against mm-hmm. Gavin's grotesque terror and treason. Yes. And please encourage him, promote him, and especially request the great Gorka to call our righteous and courageous President Trump to seal the deal. Oh, you want? we are going to use that, huh? The telephone tree? <laughs> well, Brent, we will do what we can. And uh, Larry knows that if he decides this is in his future, that I will absolutely do everything I can to support him. And I, and I think he could be one of the ones that could help save California. Thanks so much for the phone call. Appreciate that very much. We'll take more of your phone calls as we continue. 833-33-GORKA. That's a number to call, 833-33-GORKA. You can also tweet us at Seb Gorka, or you can find me at Jennifer Horn on Twitter, Jennifer Horn Radio on Facebook and Instagram. Could it be? that uh, the sage may be the next governor of California. It seems uh, that there's a possibility, certainly, whether he's in or he's out, the message has been sent to Democrats that California, not just Republicans, were ready to fight back against the progressive left. 833 gorka Jennifer Horn, in for Seb Gorka. This is America First. Portions of America First are brought to you in part by American Financing. Thank you for joining us. It is America First. I'm Jennifer Horn in for Dr. G, Sebastian Gorka. He's out on vacation today. I'll be back with you next week. In the meantime, we're taking some of your phone calls. 833-33-GORKA. That's the number to dial in. Gregory in Los Angeles, line two. You're on America First with Jennifer Horn. Hi. Hello, Jennifer. Uh, in, in lieu of Dr. Gorka, welcome to our very own warrior princess from California. You Thank are you, very sweet. Jennifer. Thank you, Gregory. Appreciate it. As a longtime California resident and also a direct descendant of the World War II generation, we don't get a lot of focus in, in these political um, struggles. And for my part, I think I'd say I've been vaccinated against all this uh how can I call it? The extremism that I've seen going up. I, I grew up during the Cold War era with the, with the communists, the socialists, all of that. So all this stuff that I hear going on and see going on, it's, it's a, a twist on, uh, on a lot of the same old stuff. But you've got the social media now. You have things you didn't have back then to mm-hmm. keep pushing these agendas forward. But I can see, I can see through all the veneer of all this uh, chicanery they're pulling. And with respect to excuse me, anyone running for gov- governor in this state, I'd highly recommend they, that they get a very good, highly sought after a, a catastrophic health insurance policy because I know these, the liberal liberal left is going to be hammering them as badly, maybe maybe worse than they went after President Trump, and they're still going after President Trump. But well, aside, I think you're right, Gregory, uh, just to jump in here. I think the Democrats are going to spend a lot of money saving Gavin Newsom over the next month or so now that we have that date in mind. They don't want that narrative out there that he lost or that he would right, be recalled. That'd be really in, embarrassing. I, could, please, I haven't heard any, any effort about going through California's election process not yeah. one iota about going through and doing an audit and seeing how did things go down in California. We got like what fifty at the last election in uh, in uh, November sixth. What was it? Fifty-seven, fifty-seven electoral votes are up for yeah. grabs, and we, we've just, lost one because of. We've lost one, and there's been some redistricting going on. I will tell you, I did speak yesterday to uh, Linda Payne. She is the president, co-founder of the Election Integrity Project in California. And uh, they were actually integral. If you if you heard about the Supreme Court decision upholding Arizona's ban on ballot harvesting and uh, on uh, requiring voters to vote within their precinct, the Election Integrity Project in California actually had um, a lawyer who wrote as a friend of the court to help with that decision, which was kind of interesting. But what's really troubling about California and the reason it's important to break up this Democrat dynasty is that there are the voter rolls are a mess in California and they are well set on keeping mail in ballots a a thing of not just covid it's going to be in place for a really long time and what's stunning is the election integrity project found that there are 1.8 million more registered voters in California than there are eligible voters 1.8 million that is troubling now it may not impact a presidential election, but for congressional seats that are decided on 300 votes, it's really a big deal. So it takes someone to break up that dynasty to get in there and look under the hood and see what's going on. We're going to talk about a brand new uh, social media platform from a, a Trump operative. 
Jennifer Horn in for Dr. Sebastian Gorka. The second hour of America First is next.